So obviously, Kirsten Cinema is one of two U.S. senators obstructing her party's entire agenda, basically. And they're growing increasingly frustrated with her because this is a negotiative process, right? So if she supports the reconciliation bill, then in turn, progressive lawmakers support the bipartisan infrastructure proposal, which she wants passed. So she says, I don't support that price tag. So they ask her, what do you want to sacrifice? Well, what's your counterproposal? And she gives them nothing. It's a process, and she's not participating in it. She's just obstructing. And she's even doing this to Joe Biden. So as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams explains, the president keeps begging her, tell us what you want. Put a proposal forward, Kana said in a CNN appearance Tuesday night. How do you compromise when Cinema is not saying anything? Earlier Tuesday, Cinema, who frequently says she won't negotiate through the press, met with President Joe Biden at the White House to discuss her position on the reconciliation package, which is known as the Build Back Better Act. But even during the closed door meeting with Biden, Cinema refused to clarify why she opposes the popular measure, according to Politico. Previous reporting has suggested that Cinema, who's received hundreds of thousands of dollars in campaign cash from the pharmaceutical industry, opposes Democrats' drug price reforms and proposed tax hikes on the rich and large corporations, but she hasn't said so publicly. And part of this is on Biden as well. Basically, in order to push Manchin and Cinema in the correct direction, it's been progressives doing all of the work. It's been them saying, Listen, if we don't get both of these bills in tandem, we're not going to support your bipartisan infrastructure proposal. But I mean, ultimately, this is Joe Biden's agenda, and he's done next to nothing to try to influence Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. He's rarely used his bully pulpit. He's only tacitly hinted at two individuals obstructing his party's agenda. So he definitely bears some of the blame as well. But getting back to Cinema, the reason why she's like this is very clear. The reason why she's not stating specifically why she doesn't support the $3.5 trillion reconciliation package is because she's doing exactly what her donors want her to do. She doesn't have any specific objections in particular that she's vocalizing because she's against all of it because there is going to be no negotiations for her. Her donors say jump and she says how high. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic, this article from the New York Times basically tells you everything that you need to know about Kirsten Cinema. So Jonathan Wiseman of the New York Times reports as Cinema resists the budget bill, she is set to raise money from business groups that oppose it. Now the article goes on to explain under Miss Cinema's political logo, the Influential National Association of Wholesaler Distributors and the Grocers Pack, along with lobbyists for roofers and electrical contractors and a small business group called the S Corp Political Action Committee have invited association members to an undisclosed location on Tuesday afternoon for 45 minutes to write checks for between $1,000 and $5,800 payable to Cinema for Arizona. So this is why she's not negotiating with her colleagues, because she's talking it over with her donor. She's negotiating with them, and they're very clearly telling her what to do. They're very clearly influencing her actions. Just to like put this into context for you, in a week where her party is trying to hash out the final details of this reconciliation proposal, she's not doing anything to help them. Behind closed doors, she's having a fundraiser with these groups who specifically oppose all of it. She doesn't care about what's in the bill. If her donors tell her that she can support it, then maybe she does. But if they say no, she's going to listen. And this is specifically the result of corruption. Because believe it or not, when she was running for Congress during the Democratic Party primary, she wasn't against lowering the cost of prescription drugs. But then she got elected, took a bunch of pharmaceutical money uh, contributions in the general election, and all of a sudden she had a change of heart. And if you don't believe me, the Daily Poster actually shared one of her old campaign ads saying before Kirsten Cinema threatened to blow up Democrats' Medicare drug negotiation bill, she demanded that everyone have access to the lowest cost prescriptions. Watch this ridiculous ad from Cinema's 2018 Democratic primary campaign. And again, look at what she says here and juxtapose that with what she's doing right now. Growing up, our family struggled to make ends meet and we didn't have health insurance. No child should go without a doctor, and no family should be bankrupted by medical bills. We need to make healthcare more affordable. 
with access to the lowest cost prescriptions and fix what's broken in the system, not go back to when Arizonans had no say about their health coverage. I'm Kirsten Cinema. I sponsor this message because every American deserves quality, affordable health care. And now hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations from the pharmaceutical industry later, she does a complete 180. And that ad wasn't even that good. Any Democrat who says that they support affordable health care, that's basically code for, mm, I support not single-payer health care. Because when we're talking about health care, I mean, the goal should just be health care. Not, I support affordable health care. It should be, I support health care for Americans, period. Because what is and isn't affordable is subjective. But I mean, that's neither here nor there. You can see clearly that the rhetoric has changed, and it's because she has been corrupted. I mean, she's basically flaunting her corruption right now. She is blatantly corrupt, doing fundraisers that she knows the press is going to talk about, and she's doing this all in a week when her party is trying to hash out the details of this bill. She's basically, you know, uh, throwing this in your face, saying, what are you going to do about it? You can't do anything. You can't control me. My donors control me. She just is shameless, and it's gross. Now, I think that this attempt by Cori Bush, which we're going to show uh, on Mehdi Hassan's program, it's going to fail because this person, she's been hollowed out. She has no soul. She has no compassion or decency. All she cares about is appeasing her donors. But Cori Bush at least makes an attempt to appeal to her humanity. And even if I don't believe this is going to work and get through to her, I still think this is really important because this is exactly what people should be in Congress to do, to represent the people who put them there. Take a look. You know, I think sometimes we forget, you know, we can forget our own struggles. We can forget where we came from. And I just want to say that every bit of struggle that she's ever faced in her life, that everything that she's ever seen or heard from a constituent, everything that she ran on to be able to end up in this in the seat that she's in, to not forget that, because let us not think that there is no way that we could ever be in that position again. And if it's not for you, care enough about people who are not in your situ in your 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 comfortable situation right now. That's what we have to look at. It is sickening to me that there are people who will just uh, push aside those that need these deep housing investments. What we're talking about is saving lives right now. We need the we need that prescription drug reform. And to say, oh, you know what? You can continue to have to worry about whether you're going to pay your rent or 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 get the um, the life saving medications that you need because you know what my donors are the yeah. ones who have me here. You know I, it's sickening, but I am I'm speaking to her humanity and I hope she hears me. I hope she hears me. Every single person in your district deserves your focus and your representation. They deserve for you to pay attention to them and put them first. Public servant you are. So serve the public humanity first. Yeah, I mean, that's well put. Uh, unfortunately, Kirsten Cinema is going to see that and, and disregard it entirely. She doesn't care at all. In fact, I, I honestly think that she gets off on being unnecessarily cruel and basically telling her constituents to fuck off. The entire Democratic Party of Arizona currently is against her because of what she's doing. Not only this, but her refusal to abolish the filibuster, which is why we have to pass bills using reconciliation in the first place, because you're not going to get 10 votes from Republicans. So the only way they can get anything accomplished is through budget reconciliation. But even when it comes to that process, she's against it. So at this point in time, she's just an obstructionist Republican. She's not a Democrat. She's a Democrat in name only, but she's such a conservative that she doesn't belong in this party. And the only benefit to having her in the Democratic Party currently is so that way Democrats can say they have a majority. But if you're not actually going to help your party, why are you even there? In fact, why are you there, period, if you don't care about anyone but your donors? Just quit and become a lobbyist. I'm sure they'd hire you. Why are you in Congress? There are people with needs. There are people who are suffering currently, who are unhoused, who need their medication, and you're blocking them. People may die as a result of your inaction and obstruction, but she doesn't care. And she's just probably be behind closed doors 
laughing it up. It, it's just, it, it's sick. This is truly an amoral, uh, disgusting person. But I, I think that by now everyone knows that about Kirsten Cinema. She's truly shown her true colors and it's, it's not pretty.